Hello everybody. Um, first of all, Happy New Year. Uh, starting off in January. Happy to be here at the Centre of the Frisians. Um, we're going to talk about management of young horses um, uh, during their stage uh, um, from six months on till, let's say, two and a half, three. I'm going to make an introduction about that. Um, going to tell a bit about what we see in our practice, what type of farms are out there, controlling diseases in young horses, and um, talking a little bit about the future, some risk factors which are out there. My name is Gerrit Kampman, I'm a veterinarian in um, Den Ham. I graduated from Utrecht University in 1999. I'm working in the equine department with four nice colleagues, uh, happy to have a surgeon on board, happy to have a specialist on uh, gynecology, um, so we um, can do our job uh, good at, at that place. I uh, have technicians present and uh, two farriers on the premises, and I uh, have a caseload of um, gynecology in the early 80s on, and uh, now more going into referral clinical work. Why am I talking here? Uh, Ageert van der Lee is uh, always um, pushing me to uh, make some publications in the Friso. Um, so, and uh, via via, I um, I came here to do this talk. As I said, a big practice, still a, a mixed practice. Everything on board. Uh, Feel is a big department. We have a, a small animal department. We have um, a chicken department. Um, cow department and an equine department. Facility was um, um, built in um, 2012, so we're now in the 10th year and going okay. I would say 50% uh, is ambulant work and 50% is uh, work at the clinic. Um, and what we're gonna do is more uh, go from the right to the left so more on the clinic, uh, less in the field. Um, that's the way it goes. Uh, I think in, in modern times, uh, um, it has to do with the equine business, I think, also. Um, people um, uh, uh, want to spend more money on their horses, and uh, um, so they want to take less risks, and we have less risks when we do stuff at the clinic. What do we see at our practice? Uh, still, um, and it's uh, sad to say so, but still warm infections in young horses. That is mainly parascaris and um, the red blood worms, the atostomiosis. We still see that a lot. It's strange, um, but um, that's uh, the, the, the most part of young horses uh, which we see when they have problems. Upper airway infections also, uh, um, um, we see that a lot, and it's probably going to be influenza and um, Herpes virus uh, related. Larsonia is an important one coming up, I would say. Salmonella, uh, mostly in combination with the sand uptake. And the stranglers, Streptococcus aequi, still out there. And Rhodococcus aequi, maybe not in this um, talk for uh, ra raising young horses, um, but we got it out there in our uh, facility. So red blood worms uh, on the screen, you can see that. Uh, it's still a difficult one. Uh, uh, um, the worm is hiding in the gut wall and um, it's difficult to get to that uh, type of worm. Um, uh, sometimes it comes massively uh, into the gut and then it gives a, it gives a problem uh, in the young horse. The other one, um, the parascaris uh, that's on the right of the screen, um, has to do with the resistance against Ifomec, I would say. We see that at our uh, premises also. Um, so it's a, a difficult one to treat. Um, take into account that a coughing horse also sometimes has uh, parascaris for sure uh, because of the migration of those uh, larvae in the, in the lungs. Stranglers, still an important one. See that in the, uh, in the young horses uh, still a lot. Um, it's a, a child disease. I always say, okay, uh, young horses, maybe you can compare it with daycare of, uh, of children. Um, you put a lot of horses together and they have to go through a lot of diseases uh, while they are young. 
And Stranglers is still an important one to, uh, which is out there. And um, yeah, if they had have it, um, they can get uh, pretty sick from that. Um, uh, so we still see that in practice. La Sonia, probably uh, less known, uh, um, but I see it more and more, and um, that's why I put it up here. Uh, it has to do with the uh, diarrhea form, uh, colic form, uh, because of bacteria, La Sonia. Um, in the small intestines, uh, you get a thick wall uh, in that intestine, um, and sometimes you don't see the diarrhea because the um, um, the problem is in the in the front gut resort, we say, and the water resorption is still in the in the main colon, so uh, you don't see, always see diarrhea um, because the wall gets thickened. They um, uh, there is less absorption uh, possible through that gut, so uh, they lose weight pretty fast, um, and because there is um, less protein. In the blood also, you get a form of uh, edema, and then you see the swelling on the, um, mostly edema forms uh, under the belly, between the front legs, that's an important place, uh, and in this horse you see on the right, you also see it in the scrotum of this horse. What is a problem um, in this time of year, when they have the winter coat, you don't always see this. this. So it's uh, an important one. Um, um, which is probably uh, missed sometimes, or we, we see them late. You don't see the edema because of the winter coat. This one is clipped on the right, for sure. Um, just to show you, uh, just to show you also the the edema which is formed there. Going to the types of management uh, which we have in Holland. Um, I would say you have uh, a couple of forms. The breeder keeps the young horses at the same place. Uh, that's uh, um, possible when you have enough place to do that. Uh, the risk factor directly when your uh, mares are also uh, again in foal, you have young horses at the same premises as your pregnant mares. I don't like the idea. If you have enough space, I would uh, really keep them apart on that uh, on that place. Um, but I understand why they do it and they. Um, and um, bred their foals, it costs a lot of money to breed those foals, they are uh, careful with those foals, they don't want to put them externally away. So I understand what the, those uh, breeders are doing. Um, then you have the small commercial farms, I would say, uh, um, a couple of uh, horses on the premises together with other equine activities. Uh, same deal, um, if you have them close together, I'm not a big fan for, uh, for this type of uh, housing or um, um, farms, um, there's a lot of uh, incoming from different horses, uh, so a lot of risk on um, getting disease in your premises, on the, in your horses, and also the pool of young horses is a pool where, um, well, the, the, where the sickness um, uh, sometimes goes around. So um, it's not always the best idea to do that, but it's, it's out there. I, I would say in Holland it's pretty normal that, that it's out there. And then the big commercial farms uh, uh, from 100 to uh, 200 young horses on the premises, sometimes even more, um, totally uh, doing only that, uh, raising young horses after weaning. A couple of important management rules in that uh, way of uh, housing. Uh, we have to have enough space for the young ones indoor and outdoor and then I always say Holland is a small country we don't have that much space so then you see that uh, those big farms are more up in the north of Holland uh, more uh, in the east of Holland uh, you need to have a lot of pasture to uh, feed those horses uh, and to raise those horses um, and again we have a small country so um, um, that is not always easy you have to have enough feeding place indoor as well as outdoor. When you have them indoor, a good ventilation um, is needed. Um, clean bedding when they are indoor, I'll come to that uh, again, and um, a daily control of the animals, very important. And when the groups are getting bigger, 
that as a difficult task to perform um, because when you have over 300 animals uh, you can imagine that it's not always easy to see each individual animal out there uh, outdoor again and indoor it's not always easy to do that good fencing and a stall build to reduce the risk of injury most important they're young they want to play um, they wreck everything sometimes um, so you have to keep in mind how you build your uh, premises this type of housing we see a lot in uh, in Holland uh, you can see the space uh, where the, um, the head of the horse is coming through uh, has to have a, a certain diameter I'm not saying what diameter uh, the thing is uh, you start small with them and they grow bigger so I saw in my uh, uh, practice in my uh, um, uh, clinical cases uh, sometimes yeah, well you can imagine if they um, are scared and they pull the head back uh, they hurt themselves they, they break the jaw that happens uh, if the the line of uh, if the fence is not um, uh, is, is too wide and sometimes uh, the feet can come through so we have a lot of risk of injury with those young horses the way uh, at this uh, how this looks uh, it looks uh, nice you can clean it very well uh, you see the, the the sides of the this stable you can clean it out clean it out you see straw bedding uh, and mostly uh, what happens in Holland is uh, throw extra straw on it uh, on the old uh, on the old straw so they come up a bit higher 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 and there you you're taking somewhat a risk with the Frisian horses with the fetlocks and uh, everybody knows the, the skin dermatitis which can happen there so I'm a bit worried um, uh, sometimes that when it gets too dirty you get a feed problem um, so take that into account another one for the Frisians uh, in between uh, uh, sort of the same deal this one uh, look at the space between the uh, between the uh, the lines of the of the stable. Um, also, there uh, things happen. Uh, um, I had them uh, through, and then they can't come back. And then uh, you have to phone the fire department uh, um, to free those horses. It's not a nice uh, thing to see. Um, they can they can yeah they can hurt themselves for sure. Lighting is good in this one, I would say. Yeah, you, you, you see, uh, you see, the lighting is okay. Again, straw um, uh, in the stables. Um, if you look at the, there's a one horse uh, in the hind of this stall, and I'm always a bit worried about that. I want to I want them to eat all together. Um, they have to have the space also to eat all together, and the one who's left behind. Um, you should take take care of uh, such a horse. Uh, watch what's what's happening there. Controlling diseases in those young ones. The deworming strategies, I think, very important, and the pasture management, very important. Egg counts and features, yes, we have to do that. It's legislation in Holland. Um, I'm not a big fan, to be honest, uh, in, in these farms where we raise, raise those young horses. I don't think, I don't think it's reliable enough. Um, it's more reliable to use a, a strategy of... Uh, uh, of um, Time, a time frame in the year when you do your deworming uh, in those uh, in those farms, and that is allowed if you are um, talking to the owner of those farms and you you make a plan together with the vet, make a plan how do we uh, do our deworm strategy, write it down um, and do in between uh, controls uh, through uh, features uh, accounts, and you're good. Uh, I'm not a big fan of um, letting that all go and, and see what happens. Uh, I, would, I would make a fast strategy on, um, on how to do warm uh, the horses. They are young, they are uh, susceptible for those warm infections, so um, I, won't, I won't rely only on egg count in these farms. Also because of pasture, man pasture management. Again, we have a small country. Uh, you see the difference between these two pictures of uh, horses in the field. Um, 
uh, we have a good day today, but we had a very bad uh, 14 days, wet, 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 and um, we see a lot of land uh, in the in Holland, uh, as on the picture on the right, and um, that for sure is not a nice uh, pasture to uh, get some grass from. Um, but you see that a lot. Um, picture on picture on the left, green, and you can say you can see that the, there is a possibility there to um, to change the fields. So um, they they go into a different field where there's more grass, and uh, let the the old one grow, the old field grow. Um, and if you do that in a, in a good strategical way, you probably have less um, problems with uh, worm infections in your young horses. Vaccination strategies for the young horses. Um, three most important ones we do in uh, Holland, I would say. I think influenza tetanus is a pretty normal one to give uh, in the young horse. Strangers, uh, not that uh, not that often, uh, but it becomes more and more. And I think if you use uh, the vaccination stranglers, uh, the idea is, okay, they will get stranglers, but they won't get uh, it so severely, so that you hope that uh, not uh, one of the young guys or girls is going to die from stranglers. Uh, that's what you want to try to do. Um, so I think it's a good one to, to use. Uh, and same um, is for uh, HIV 1 and 4, herpes virus. Um, the young ones are, are uh, still a good uh, pool uh, and reservoir where, they, where the herpes virus can, can, can be in. If we do more uh, vaccination against herpes virus, probably we won't see that, more, uh, that many outbreaks in Holland. Compared with Germany, compared with Belgium, I think we're still behind. Um, so it, I think it would be best if we just uh, do that as well in our young horses. That's where they, they need it and that's where you have to use it. Hygiene protocols in those farms against Larsonia, against Salmonella, um, look at your pasture management. Uh, try to keep the young horses on a dry pasture. Um, are they still eating grass or are they only eating sand? That's, I think, the most important message uh, what I can give. Um, if so, I would put them in the stable, for sure at night. It's always a bit of a, a thing. Uh, um, we want to um, have them um, as a hold those horses uh, like um, uh, like like they do in nature, um, I always say, okay, it's a domestic animal, and we are living in Holland here. Um, uh, you can't you can't do that all the time. Uh, you take too too many risks. And um, I would say, uh, in in those very wet days, what we have now, and it will get more and more. So we don't have a good winter, but we only have those wet days. I would uh, say uh, stable them up at night for sure, and then they are on dry, clean bedding. Give enough straw that they can eat. Uh, because you have to eat, it's a roughage uh, eating animal, uh, that's what they need. And then in those stables, when they are there, how often do you clean those stables? I think it's an, uh, a thing to think about, probably more than we do now. Playing devil's advocate, um, just in a little way, uh, uh, I want to do that. In what way are we performing the vaccinations and the deworming strategies on those farms? Problem is when the farms get bigger and you have like 300 horses and we come in as a vet and we have to uh, start the vaccination program in that farm. What happens mostly is that they uh, are treated as a herd. So you have a sort of walking system and they come into a, a fixation box where we can do, do the deworming. Um, if you have to have 300 through such a such a um, fixation fixation box, um, you have pretty much stress in that herd which you are uh, trying to treat at that day. Looking at that, uh, I always find it a little bit of a cowboy. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm working like a cowboy uh, in it and and uh, thinking about that. Uh, how much stress does that give in in uh, to those horses? And a lot of diseases come out stress related. Um, 
thinking about HIV, for instance, if you have a carrier there and there is enough stress on that horse, that horse can spread all of a sudden HIV um, while maybe we are vaccinating uh, against it. Um, so I'm thinking about that. How can we do that better? And a strange thing, um, what I find very, very strange is the, the vaccination against stranglers. I have a, a trouble getting with this needle uh, the vaccines in, in my syringe. Uh, then I have to do, when it's in, have to do this. Can't even do it. Then pull the lip up, give the injection in the upper lip, um, and then um, empty the syringe. What is strange from that is um, if I do that with one young horse and I put on my gloves, that's okay. If I have a farm with 200 horses, how am I going to do that practically? And then it gets uh, worse. Uh, they have to come in. So I have to. what do I have to do? Uh, put off my gloves, change every time I, I inject a new horse, change the gloves, grab the nose, pull up the lip, inject. Feels very strange. Don't understand um, how this uh, in this way is uh, manufactured, to be honest. Um, hopefully for stranglers we get an, uh, another one, which is legislated in Holland. Um, but it's just to think about what, I'm, what am I doing at that moment, going from horse to horse to horse to horse, to give them an injection against stranglers, to give them the vaccination against stranglers, but am I not spreading um, something? Some risk factors for the future. Um, I'm a bit worried about the climate change. Uh, it's out there uh, and, and we see it also every day. In Holland, uh, that means it will get wetter and wetter. We don't have a winter. Winter, If you have a winter with, uh, um, with low temperatures, it, it, it sort of um, uh, breaks down also the, the, a lot of infections which are, which are out there and which uh, give a hazard to the horse. When it's so... Um, so wet, uh, I'm, I'm a bit worried um, what's gonna, gonna come our way. And I think it's important that we think about it and, and um, take our measurements in, in that. I had last week my first one with, um, with a disease, uh, atypical myopathy. Uh, those horses were still uh, day and night out, outdoors. Um, had to do with the nice weather, we don't have a winter. Um, again, uh, uh, a big coat. Um, when they came up close, uh, you could you could feel the ribs totally. But um, yeah, people think, okay, my, my horse looks thick. But if you have a feel, you feel the ribs. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, normally we see it in the fall, and now see I see it in the winter. It's a bit late to 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 see that, but it's out there. Whereas now is a bit of a worry uh, that will come for sure. When we don't know, that's always a difficult one. Um, if it gets warmer, uh, um, uh, stuff will come up higher, um, uh, which now is, uh, has to do with with the um, mosquito, uh, um, which can come higher and higher. Uh, so we're we're very worried that it's gonna come in Holland, and it will come in Holland. Same with the tick rela uh, related diseases like Lyme. Lyme is already sometimes uh, diagnosed, diagnosed in Holland for sure, but it will get more when it gets more warm. Um, so look also at the water supply. How do they drink in the pastures? Is, is, is it uh, pool related that it, can, that it can attract a lot of mosquitoes? I'm a bit worried about what we're going to do there. Thank you for your attention. Hope you uh, can um, uh, do something with my... Uh, my talk and um, good luck with all your young horses.